Hello and welcome to another edition of Telescope Man. Tonight's edition, we're going to do a little screen capture for you and show you a very neat free program called RTGUI. So here we go. You're looking at the uh, my screen on my laptop right now. And I've already got the program, the free program, RTGUI, opened up on the screen. And you can download this, uh, surprisingly, at the RTGUI.com website. Now, what's neat about this little program that you see here is it can print an observing list for any time or date. So, if you're wondering what you can view outside tonight at 6 p.m., well, you can just come right up here. And, of course, it picked up the date right off the computer. And here's the time, and you can click that time, and you can change it to any time that you want uh, during the night that you're going to be outside and viewing. So, um, you know, it's past 6 o'clock here right now, so it's picking up the computer time, uh, which is 2,200 hours and 6 minutes. Okay, so uh, that's what it's picking up is the computer time and date. But you can change both of these parameters. But we, before we get into that, let me uh, just say that the very first time you open it up, uh, it's going to ask you for your latitude and longitude, and you're going to need to put that in. And the first time you close the program, it will automatically save the latitude and longitude and remember it for the next time that you open it. And you can always check these, of course, because they're right on the main screen. You can see what it's doing. Now, a little side benefit of this uh, free program is that it can also control a telescope using the ASCOM drivers, which we will talk about uh, in a later episode. But uh, this, you can actually uh, find an object and uh, make the scope go to that object. So that's another neat feature of this free program. So when you first install it, it's going to ask you what kind of telescope you have and what COM port you're using, and things like that. You can just select none and just ignore that for right now and just simply use it as a tool to give you an observing list. Now, all the objects in the database uh, are magnitude 10 or brighter. So the author wrote it that way so that uh, most all the objects can be viewed from a reasonably free, uh, from light pollution, uh, suburban viewing site. Okay, so that's another feature that makes this kind of a really neat program. So let me show you the usual way that I use this program. I've opened it up already on my screen right here. And I'll come down here, and on the Best of Sky button, I'm going to click that. And it gave me my first object. But then I'm going to go over here where it says Save Matches. Save Matches. And I'm going to click that. And now it's going to run through the database for this time and date. And it's preparing me an observing list for tonight and it's in text format so you can easily print it off uh, on your printer and you can see it found uh, 56 matches for tonight 
So I'm going to say, you know, it says, do you want to see this? And I say, yes, I do want to see that. And let me kind of make this screen a little bigger for you so you can see it. All right, and we'll make it go down a little further here. All right. And now you can see it's got a nice little observing list here that starts with Saturn. Okay. And then it goes to M42 and M45 and M51 and so forth. And it does give you a lot of information on the item, so you can decide whether you want to view it or not. Uh, the two um, most critical items that I look at each time is what is the altitude of this object at this time. Okay, and you can see that M42 is up about 32 degrees, so it's still okay to view. But as we go down here, we may find one that's 10 degrees above the horizon, and that's going to be a little too tight to view, and you can just ignore those that are very low and concentrate on the ones that are higher up in the sky and and right here in the first column, it tells you how high up it is above the horizon. Then a little further over, you're going to see the magnitude of the item. And, you know, all these are referred to up here, so you don't have to remember the order or anything. And if you go across, you'll run across the magnitude of that item, like right here, M51, it's... Uh, galaxy and it's at 8.1 now I know from experience that from my observing site for a galaxy which is the light is spread out across the galaxy it's not a pinpoint light source like a star I know that this is going to be very difficult from from my observing site that has some light pollution in it okay so this 8.1, that would probably be the dimmest object I would ever attempt in a galaxy from this site. And I may not see it, may not be able to see it. Whereas if we go up here to M42, it's Mag 4, I'm going to be able to see that very easily, okay, from my observing site. So very helpful. One trick I would tell you is when you go up here to do a file print, be sure that you select uh, landscape mode. Okay, you want to be in landscape mode when you uh, print this out. It just prints out better than uh, in portrait mode uh, if you print it out on a long ways rather than a portrait mode so always go up here select uh, page setup first select landscape mode you know say okay and then go up here and do a print on it okay set the page up first to landscape and it's uh, just a little easier to read now the other neat thing about this program is it's got, uh, it has a database in it that is searchable, and you can search on for items in this database. So I'm going to click this little button down here that says Search Wizard, and uh, now I've got a selection, you know, search for deep sky objects, search for double stars or search for a specific star. Okay, so I could, there's various variables here that you can put in, and then it's going to give you uh, just a list of double stars or lists or just one item or items of that type uh, in the deep sky. So let's try one here. I say deep sky, and now I get another list of, you know, open clusters, globular clusters, uh, uh, planetaries, nebulous galaxies. And I could select just open clusters. All right, and you notice 
came up here and gave me all the constellations so I could just search inside one constellation to see if there's any objects there. Uh, but anyway, let's just say OK and see what we get. OK, and it found uh, the first one. And again, I'm going to do Save Matches, and it's going to run through there, through its database, and it's going to probably come up with a list of uh, those types of ob objects that I just selected. So let's see what it does here. And this time it found 225 matches, okay? And here they are. And notice that they're all open clusters, all right? Gave me a list of all open clusters and then I can just peruse this list for the constellations that I want uh, to look at that night. It gave me all of them because I didn't tell it certain constellations so it just gave all of them to me. So uh, there's a whole list of just open clusters. So it's a very neat program uh, that this fellow has written a lot of us use this. This is great to have on your laptop if you're outside with your laptop. Uh, especially if you have a go-to computer, you can actually use this to control the computer directly from uh, this little program here. So, hop on the internet. Go out and look at rtgui.com. Read about it a little bit and download it. It's free. Doesn't I'm, and it's a very small program. You'll be very surprised how small this program is uh, when you download it. And download it. Put it on your computer. Start playing around with it. And I think you're going to find it's a super handy tool to have when you go out in the field to look at stars at night. So until next time, clear skies to everybody, and don't forget, keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every night. See you later. <laughs>